Sunday, the 29th of April, 1945, one week before the end of World War II in Europe. The US 7th Army's 45th Infantry Division liberates Dachau, the first regular concentration camp built by the Nazi government. The soldiers smell not only human excrement, but also decaying bodies, causing many of them to cry or vomit, as they find piles of impossibly malnourished corpses, more than 30 railroad cars filled with thousands of dead bodies, and 30,000 survivors, most of them severely emaciated, who look like walking skeletons. Thousands of them are sick, and will die from typhus epidemics and starvation during the months following the camp's liberation. Four years prior, in 1941, Dachau is visited by a young girl, who records her impressions of the place in her personal diary. Today, we went to the SS concentration camp at Dachau. We saw everything we could. We saw the gardening work, we saw the pear trees, we saw all the pictures painted by the prisoners. Marvelous. And afterwards, we had a lot to eat. It was very nice. This young girl is a daughter of Heinrich Himmler the SS leader and second most powerful figure in Nazi Germany. Her name is Gudrun Himmler. Gudrun Himmler was born on the 8th of August 1929 in Munich, then part of the Weimar Republic, which was the name given to the German government from 1918 to 1933. Gudrun was the only biological child of Heinrich Himmler and his wife Margarete, though her parents later adopted a son. When growing up, Gudrun was called Puppy by her parents, which in German means little doll. Gudrun lived with her mother by the Lake Tergenzer, located in the Bavarian Alps in southern Germany, whereas Heinrich Himmler was mainly in Berlin. Whilst there, he fell into an adulterous relationship with his private secretary, Hedwig Potthast. The affair produced two children, and when Himmler's wife found out about the relationship, she felt humiliated and bitter. Gudrun did not learn of her half-siblings until after the war, and when she tried to make contact with them, Potthast refused. Heinrich Himmler adored his daughter, and had her regularly flown to his offices in Berlin from Munich. When she was at home, he telephoned her most days and wrote to her every week, and she accompanied her father on some official duties. Gudrun was proud to be the daughter of a famous man and was very devoted to her father. As a child, she would collect all his newspaper pictures in a large album, and was annoyed that her father had not distinguished himself with military honours. She noted in her diary, Everyone gets medals and honours, except Papi, and he is the first one who should get them, because if it were not for him, many things would be different. In Nazi Germany, Gudrun Himmler was unofficially referred to as the Nazi Princess. On the 24th of December each year, Gudrun used to drive with her father to see Hitler in Munich and wish him a Merry Christmas. When she was little, he used to give her dolls. Later, she would receive from the Führer a box of chocolates. After the Allied landing in Normandy on the 6th of June 1944, Himmler knew that the war was over and toyed with the idea of negotiating a separate peace with the Western Allies while continuing to fight the Soviet Union. During the winter of 1944 to 1945, he considered using concentration camp prisoners as a bargaining chip to initiate such negotiations. In April 1945, Himmler met with a representative of the World Jewish Congress in Stockholm, Sweden, Hillel Storch, to discuss openings for negotiations, but the Allies refused to negotiate with Himmler. When the news of Himmler's offer to the Allies reached Hitler, he was furious and stripped Himmler of all his offices and ordered his arrest. While Hitler committed suicide on the 30th of April 1945, Himmler went into hiding and tried to evade capture and escape retribution as the Nazi regime collapsed. He would shave his moustache, wear an eye patch, be dressed as a soldier, and use false identification papers with different names. He was eventually captured by British forces on the 21st of May, 1945, near Bremen. At first, he attempted to conceal his identity, but he was soon recognised. Interrogated by British intelligence officers, Himmler admitted his true identity and was taken into custody. Realising the extent of his crimes and fearing the consequences, Himmler bit down on a cyanide capsule hidden in his mouth during a medical examination on the 23rd of May, 1945 and died within minutes. 
His suicide prevented him from facing trial for his role in the Holocaust and other atrocities committed by the Nazi regime. After the war, Gudrun and her mother were hiding in South Tyrol, but were betrayed by SS men and eventually captured by the Americans, who took them into custody. They were initially sent to a detention camp in Italy and later to France and Germany, including the war crimes prison in Nuremberg. When Gudrun learned that her father had committed suicide in British custody, her world collapsed. Both Gudrun and her mother were later brought to testify at the Nuremberg trials and were released in November 1946. Gudrun later bitterly referred to this time as the most difficult of her life and said that she and her mother were treated as though they had to atone for the sins of her father. During her whole life, she would cling to the belief that her father did not commit suicide, but instead was murdered by the Allies. She claimed that neither her nor her mother received any official notification of his death, and to her the photo of him dead was a retouched photo of when he was alive. In 1952, Gudrun Himmler separated from her mother and moved to Munich. In the following years, she worked as a tailor, a part-time worker, office assistant, and finally as a secretary. Due to her background, she lost her job several times since nobody wanted to be associated with a daughter of a top Nazi. Gudrun Himmler never renounced the Nazi ideology and repeatedly tried to relativize and justify the actions of her father. She was active in the radical right-wing and neo-Nazi scene and supported the Viking Youth, founded in 1952, which was organized and ideologically aligned with the Hitler Youth. In 1955, together with Adolf von Ribbentrop, the son of the executed Nazi foreign minister Joachim von Ribbentrop, she accepted an invitation from the British neo-fascist movement to share her view on National Socialism. Whilst there, Gudrun explained that her father had been a great man, but that he was very misunderstood and that his good name had been destroyed by the Jews. At annual Ulrichsberg gatherings in Austria, which were attended by former Waffen-SS members as well as civilian Nazi sympathizers, Gudrun received the status of both a star and an authority. Oliver Schröm, author of a book about the organization, described her as a flamboyant Nazi princess. Although her father was hated by many as the greatest mass murderer of all time, Gudrun decided to portray Himmler to the world in a different, so-called true light. In the late 1950s, she began planning to write a book about her father, but the book was never published. From 1961 to 1963, Gudrun worked under an assumed name as a secretary for West Germany spy agency, the Federal Intelligence Service, at his headquarters in Pulach. At the time, the agency was headed by Reinhard Gerlin, an American recruited general who hired, among others, ex-Nazis based on their connections and experience with Eastern Europe and anti-communist activities. Later, Gudrun married the far-right propagandist and author Wolf Dieter Berwitz, who became a party official in the Bavarian section of the NPD, a far-right neo-Nazi and ultra-nationalist political party in West Germany. The marriage produced two children. Gudrun adopted her husband's surname, and she kept her identity secret for a long time after changing her name. Even her son-in-law was initially unaware of Gudrun's true identity. Officially, the house she lived in did not belong to her, and she did not have a telephone line registered in her name. Gudrun was a prominent public figure in the organization named Stille Hilfe, or Silent Help, that has provided financial and other forms of support to former members of the Nazi regime, including war criminals. For decades, she was a major supporter of the organization, without however making any concrete statements about it. Her commitment was particularly evident in the case of Anton Maloth, a former SS guard who during the Second World War served at the Theresienstadt Ghetto in the former protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. For 40 years, Maloth lived a comfortable life in Italy, but when it was discovered that he was a war criminal, he was expelled in 1988 to West Germany. As there were no preliminary proceedings against Maloth, he was freed and from 1988 to 2000, he lived near Munich. Gudrun was instructed by the Stille Hilfe to rent a comfortable room for him in a retirement home, which was built on the land formerly owned by Rudolf Haas, once Adolf Hitler's deputy Führer. When Gudrun Himmler died on the 24th of May 2018 in Munich, Germany, she was 88 years old. Until her death, she remained loyal to her father's memory and to the values of the Nazi ideology.
In the 1950s, she intended to travel to America, where she believed the documents were that would clear her father's name. The Americans, however, never granted a visa to the daughter of the man who gave the world Auschwitz and was responsible for the mass murder of six million European Jews. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.